Hello there, beautiful souls and beautiful humans. Rosie Glow here with a little new moon pre-eclipse activation. And I wanted to create this video for you because we are coming into an incredibly powerful eclipse season. And the last time that this particular eclipse pair, so Aries and Scorpio, um, did their thing, did their dance, was about 10 years ago. And it was a very, very profound time in my own life where I actually had to learn the very valuable lesson that it's uh, what, all that glitters is not gold, first and foremost. And secondly, that the way we perceive things does either limit our experience or help us to make the most of the prevailing winds. So before I go further into that, for those of you who are new to me, welcome to Manifesting Star Peace Utopia. The Facebook group is where we do all these beautiful activations and the YouTube channel is where we get collect connected and we dream up a new reality. So if you are new to me on the channel, then please do subscribe, hit the notifications tab and the all videos and you'll know every time I am coming along. I do speak to Star C but many of you will uh, maybe not recognize your star seeds yet and that's totally cool one of the key things that i feel is absolutely essential for those of us who are here as pioneers of the new earth is to remember that all of the activations in the world are wonderful but if we don't ground them earth them and work with these energies in our physical reality actually take the energetic quantum leaps that are available to us and embed them into our physical reality so that our reality changes and there's no real point. <laughs> We're just bringing super high energy in and it's just dissipating and isn't really doing what it's meant to do. So I am a channel of divine grace. I am a galactic healer, psychic, intuitive. I speak on behalf of the Star Peace Collective um, and they are basically the intergalactic super federation. So all of the galaxies in our universe have come together to declare that peace has been declared in this universe and it is time now for us to experience peace on Earth too but in order for us to have this experience in our outer reality we are required to activate it in our inner reality and it's really how we move beyond duality how we move beyond fighting for change how we move beyond judging things as good or bad and actually allow duality to evolve into polarity and to accept the benefits and the joys of light and dark night and day <laughs> yin and yang uh, the time to expand and grow the time to stabilize and root down one is not better than the other. And the beautiful thing about this particular time period is we're really getting the opportunity, those of us who are ready, to welcome those of you who are joining, by the way. I'd love to know who you are. Say hello. Please put a little drop in the comments and say where you're at today. But we're here to unite our soul self, our soul consciousness with our human self. And that's the most exciting thing about this particular time. Like This is why I'm so excited. And the dreams, the messages I was having through my sleep last night were like, whoa, <laughs> okay, I've got to remember to share all of this with you all. But essentially, just imagine for a moment that everything that you've been working so hard towards, everything that impulsed you to come and be born on this earth at this time, your bigger vision why you wanted to come, your piece of the puzzle. The heavens have opened. It's like source energy is just flowing down. Grace is flowing down. It's available to all of us. But what we must do is learn to harness this energy, actually open our energy field up and allow it to come through us rather than just pass us by. And that's why I wanted to do this activation today with you, to share with you through my own experience, how you can overcome your own 3D mind blocks, how you can overcome where you close the door on yourself every time an opportunity comes knocking. And to recognize that each time you up level, each time you take a quantum leap, there's going to be that risk factor involved for you to stretch yourself beyond what you know, and trust that as you reach out, you're going to be met. And, you know, Feel the fear and do it anyway. There's a beautiful book about that. Also, you may have heard the term fear means go, not no. The statement that started my whole shift, if you like, of being a programmed automaton, although I was never really one of those. I do remember from a very young age looking around going, what on earth is going on? But, you know, it took me a while to realize I wasn't really from the earth plane and I was from the stars, as all of us are, essentially. But basically the statement, as I change my view of the world, the world around me changes, or as we change our view of the world, the world around us changes, blew my mind. That was something that landed in me around 20 years old. And it was like, wow, that was it. That was it. Show me how. 
show me how to do that that's what I'm here to teach that's what I'm here to experience if you like the sound of that please do hit the like button please do throw a little heart in interact because it does make such a big difference and everything I say that you're a yes for every time you make a physical action to kind of align with it to say yes I concur you're activating more of that in you so in today's session it's basically going to be a activation of codes within you as I speak but I want to do a little tuning in a little grounding in first and it will be well worth you having a notebook and pen so that anything that is really landing you can actually write down you can remind yourself of because this is going to be your challenge now you know as we move beyond yo-yoing through life one thing's great the other thing's shit one thing's wonderful then another drama hits us and we actually learn to live in divine equanimity divine equilibrium to surf the midline to walk this sweet spot this sweet edge if you like the midline for ourselves between um, expanding and rooting down and earthing and allowing ourselves to be in everything that we're in until we're ready for the next next expansion for us to truly be able to do this we have to learn how to get out of our own way and i remind my coaching clients of this all the time just as much as i'll remind those of you who maybe have never worked with me on that deep level before but i do want to remind you now that the start of your journey is to head over to rosyglow.com sign up for the divine legacy upgrade which is my gift to you it's worth 555 pounds and that's me being really like it's, it's worth a lot more than that. But let's just say that's what it's worth for now for us to have a monetary value. Uh, but it's really good for unblocking you. And then the next invitation would be to start joining the multidimensional yoga that I teach online twice a week. I've got other beautiful multidimensional teachers coming in as well now as we're growing because we're getting an app together. Um, and of course, for those of you who know you want to do your fear matrix to divine matrix upgrade, that's exactly what my coaching programs are about. I'm here to activate those of you who are ready to reclaim your mastery, ready to reclaim the mastery of previous incarnations and to uh, bring light to all of the karma drama that you inherited by incarnating into the physical bloodlines that you've uh, been born into so that you're set free. You're set free from all of that density and you are able to do what you came here to do, which is to progress those bloodlines, remember your self-mastery tools, remember your teacher tools, co-create the life that you truly want. And as a result of that, teach others to do the same by example. So can I get an amen? <laughs> And I know some of you who are deeply committed have been through some real challenges, um, particularly physical challenges, uh, health conditions, financial scenarios. And, you know, all I'll say is only a master will run that many rings around themselves um, and actually challenge themselves to the level that they do. Uh, having done that myself for many years as well, there's something about that's inbuilt into each of us who are incarnated star seeds, you know, here as teachers of the pathway of peace, if you like, of unconditional love and peace, star seed, um, that we absolutely have to prove ourselves no matter what, or to ourselves no matter what, that we will not abuse our power once we have it back. And that's why we tend to put ourselves through the trials and tribulations that we do. And I've been really excited to see recently just how yeah how much i've proven to myself again and again and again the level of integrity that i value that i feel is important and as i recognize it in myself i can see it in the world it builds trust right so that's what we want so let's do a little grounding in and then let's get on with what is really going to support all of us to be able to make the most of the prevailing winds of these eclipses because ultimately eclipses are like the saying when carly cleans house anything that isn't meant to be in your life anymore is going to go and anything that is will land but you'll get a revisit of old friends <laughs> sorry about the bunny ears for you to actually go is this really what I want this is what I thought I wanted is it really what I want and what's important for us is to evolve beyond judgment to curiosity to practice discernment as experiences come our way and actually ask that question um, what good can come from this how can this be the best thing that's ever happened to me even if it's something that was unanticipated and if you're honest unwanted okay so let's rub our hands together. Hello, Yana. Hello, Sophie. Hello, Anne. Who else have I got here? A few of you. Please do say hello. Have a little rub. Get your right and your left hemispheres working together and then breathe in. Stretch up. And as you breathe out, bring your hands down to your heart. Breathe in. 
Now, as you breathe out, lift the right elbow up, push your hands together, stretch the right side of your body. Beautiful. And then inhale, center, and exhale to the other side. So keep the hands as central as you can, lift the elbow up, and then breathe in again. And now let's push the hands forward, activating hastabandhas. Breathe in, stretch up. Breathe out, stretch over to your left, push your right uh, buttock down and breathe in center and breathe out to your right. So you wanna make space for grace, you wanna make space for more of your soul light <laughs> and that's gonna mean that you actually allow yourself to make space in your body. Hands to the shoulders, breathe in, breathe out, elbows together. Breathe in, open up, breathe out, elbows together. Breathe in, open up. Breathe out, elbows together. And breathe in, open up. And now take a little round circle up and back. So we're creating some flow between the bodily movements and our breath. This is essential because your breath is your connection to your soul and your physical body. Your breath is a connection to the divine through your body. Our spirit self is beyond the conditioning of the lifetimes that we have experienced, which are coded in our soul memories. And our human selves are obviously the physical embodiment that we're currently existing in, which carries not only our soul codes, but also the human bloodline codes that we are currently incarnated in. There's lots of different layers of influence. And what I invite you to do now is release the palms down. So palms facing up. Pushpaputi mudra is when you just allow your hands to lightly separate, but create a cup. And it's a bit like a sieve. I'd like you to imagine just for a moment, the crown of your head opening up. And as the crown of your head opens, like beautiful, beautiful, beautiful lotus flower, make sure your feet are uncrossed. And allow yourself to receive the codes, the Christ-like codes that we were working with over the Easter weekend. You can just say, I am the Christ-like miracle codes. I am the Christ-like miracle codes. I am the Christ-like miracle codes. Knowing that Christ-light is crystalline light. Miracles are shifts in perspective. I am the divine masculine. I am the divine feminine. I am the divine child. I am my own higher self. I am the embodiment of the divine. I am divine human. I am all that is. I am the one self I am. I am that I am. Just feel this, feel this energy flowing through you. And imagine now we've got the new moon really birthing tomorrow, the new crescent, but the energies are already in operation. And the eclipse, which is a hybrid eclipse, is going to be happening in the early hours of the morning. And so just allowing yourself at this point to go through your own ring of fire, to welcome the temporary discomfort that comes from embracing change, moving from the familiar to the unfamiliar. Just imagining, like I said, that the heavens have opened, that our own sun, the galactic sun, our universal sun, the multiversal sun and the omniversal sun are all in alignment. Cosmic mother, cosmic father, divine mother, divine father. All the energies of all that is are available to us. Divine grace, divine miracles, divine magic. And you can allow your mind to relax. You can give your mind permission now to stop living according to the conditioning that you have inherited, to take its upgrade. I invite you to see through the eyes of your divine human self. Hmm. So you might be seeing like a bright white light with all these sparkles, diamond sparkles, all of this shimmering, shining light flowing through. 
Maybe it's a soft pink, a soft yellow, a soft blue. Whatever is coming through to you now, as we call those I am statements through, just welcome it. Know it's for you. Know that you can trust it. We call in our star families, our soul families. The unicorns are around like so much right now. <laughs> the unicorns, the phoenixes, and the dragons, the mythical creatures that remind us we don't need saving, we save ourselves. We are the divine. We call in our archangels, our angels, our guides, our teachers of the purest vibrations of love and light. We call in the version of, us, of ourselves that is already where we want to be. And we ask that the path ahead is lit up for us, is the way is shown. We're given a beautiful pathway of light to step onto and follow in deep faith in ourselves allowing what needs to fall away to fall away knowing that this is a time we can celebrate we don't need to fear it what's coming oh what, what is it that I don't expect that's going to come and wallop me no let that go allow yourself to be pleasantly surprised allow yourself to know that you've already done so much deep work shed so much density why should it continue to be hard for you why does it need to be hard for you can you let it be easy can you allow yourself to own what you perceive to be your selfish wants whether that's to be seen to be heard to be recognized to be validated be responded to, to be liked, to be appreciated, to be wanted. Please claim all of this to be visible, to be supported, to feel that benevolent support, to be held, to be guided. What's making your heart sing here? Mm, beautiful. Just let this energy flow down through your body. So soften the boundaries of your skin. Let it move through your feet. So down through your bones, through your feet, into your earth chakra. You might see your earth chakra as a golden shimmering disc beneath you. And then... Beautiful light just spreading across the crystalline grid, all dimensions, all directions, all space and time. And anchoring now your tapping root, which again is shown to me like a golden root extending from your spine, the base of your spine, spiraling through your earth chakra down into the core of Mother Earth. So we can see it as penetrating the center of the earth, or we can see the center of the earth softening, opening, being receptive. The seed that is receptive to this cord of light, this root, it moves down to germinate it. A bit like conception. It's not a, a rape, it's not a pillage, it's a deep, deep, Surrender, a longing, a receiving, a loving, an opening. And therefore, this tapping root of yours or this cord of divine activation, Father Sky energy, Mother Earth energy uniting, this root, this cord, it's like an anchor. It belongs anchored into the very center of this beautiful planet. This is the energy of Beltane. This is the energy of uniting Father Sky and Mother Earth, of the celebration, the ecstatic embrace, of unifying opposites, ether and physical, yin and yang, beautiful. Now feel the energy rising up from the earth, a celebratory, loving, receptive, delicious, joyful energy, delightful energy, rising up like sap through your body, 
up and out like a fountain of delight, spreading out through your crown and out through your heart, down your arms, out, way up, back to the sun, same energy, this beautiful active force extending up, meeting the energy of the sun, going all the way up to source all that is. Beautiful. And then this beautiful, like, firework display <laughs> emanating from you, all layers of your being, activating the light body, activating the sphere of compassion. Beautiful. Let's just anchor this. I am sovereign. I am free. I am invisible, invulnerable, impermeable, impenetrable, untrackable, untraceable to anyone or anything of malevolent intent. I am highly visible, highly magnetic, highly radiant to all that that is for me, to all that that is for my most evolved path, my highest path. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. So it is and so it shall be, yes. Yes to my success, yes. Slowly bring yourself back, deepen your breath, beautiful. Ah. Welcome back, beautiful ones. So that felt really important just to, open us up to what wants to come through because now <laughs> I'm going to be me, um, walking us through these mind blocks that come up. Um, I'm just going to read what came through last night and my god what does it say? Truth is the heavens have opened. Um, manna is pouring from heaven. We are receiving a grace downpour. Nice yeah and beautiful. Um, will we focus on what we fear? what is in the past and has already happened, or energize the reality we desire, we long for, we dream of. Dream dreams awake. The time belongs, sorry, the time before the trauma. Can we remember that? That was the key that came through last night. So in case you've missed it, <laughs> I am hosting a retreat on the beautiful island of Santorini the 1st to the 6th of May, so it's literally in a couple of weeks' time, if that. And I've been called to just bring together those who are ready to activate the um, master teacher codes from the time of Atlantis, that those of you who've heeded the call were master teachers at the time of Atlantis, and I made a separate video, which is on YouTube and in this group, about the Christ-like codes, also about Christ being an ET, the connection to the crystalline grid and Atlantis and his journey as a master teacher. We all have Christ-like within us, okay? It's the crystalline codes. And this particular retreat is for us to remember the time before the fall, to remember the time before the trauma. Now, maybe you can't come to the retreat, but if you're here with me now and this resonates with you, you are energetically connected to that time. Whoever is meant to be there will be there. And those of us who've already gathered know it's potent. We know that it is essential we resolve within us, our inner masculine, that inner feminine toxicity okay the parts of us that have held on to the trauma that has passed from one generation to the next and our gift to the world is to let go of that trauma to love it up to go what was before then I know all about that I've lived it I've talked it I've re-energized it a million times I've sought the healing but what was before that what was it like when actually we didn't have this stuff, this heavy burden stuff we were carrying around with us when we didn't feel what was coming next. And that is the gift of this new moon in Aries, because it's the second new moon this in this light in this lunar cycle in Aries. So the one we had in March was kind of like the infant starting his journey again uh, into the unknown, but kind of like full of like confidence and like the sense of being invincible, because that part of us has never really experienced hardship. Now, the version of us that's stepping forward now is the version of us, as I said, that 10 years ago had the wallops from fate, if you like. It's actually our own higher self and our soul self bringing these lessons to us to help us see, oh, OK, what I think is a terrible thing can actually turn out to be a real blessing. And what I feel like or thought was everything I could ever want when I actually go nearer to it, it's a bit flimsy. It's not got the substance I need and I'm worthy and deserving of more than that. So bring me more. That ain't enough. I thought I wanted it for 20 years, but I'm handing it back. <laughs> right. So that was the lesson then. Now we're here in this time and it's like, OK, 
got all of this discernment. I've got all of this um, gravitas that's come from all of these life lessons I've learned so far. What do I really need to keep on top of now, keep my focus on so that every time it looks like I'm going to stumble or I do temporarily stumble, I can realign and I can align better than I was before. Right. Align with the divine. So in being able to actually remember before the trauma, what is important for us to remember is there are limiting beliefs that all of us are living by. That's our programming. And that's exactly what my Fearless, Loved Up and Limitless program is about clearing. It's unplugging from those limiting beliefs or detoxing them and upgrading them and then allowing yourself to reprogram according to your divine human self rather than the conditioned self that is the limited version of you, the small you rather than the big you. But before limiting beliefs came limiting decisions. And these limiting decisions are pre-birth influences uh, primarily. Okay, there are time in the womb, there are time at birth and the earliest memories we have, but they're pre-cognitive, so we don't remember them. Um, yes, they may have been passed down by ancestors. Yes, we may have past life um, limiting decisions we've brought forward but this life isn't the life where we live it again we're not here to keep recreating that we're here to remember where we block our own flow and to actually stop blocking that flow to choose to be brave to evolve beyond that particular way of showing up and shutting down on ourselves that's the lesson that's the hardest thing for all of us to actually be able to um reconcile is how we do it to ourselves we are the creators of our reality when we say i am the creator of my reality i am the source of my creations yeah i am all that is this isn't like um oh, i'm the big i am this is claiming our god self our divine human potential made in the image of the divine the codes are all here i'm choosing to be a masterful co-creator of my reality oh and i've just gone into lack again oh i've just gone into limited thinking again oh I'll, rather than oh or I'm a co-creator of my reality, but I have to hold on to these beliefs because these beliefs are my self-identity. And if I'm not these beliefs, who am I? Doesn't happen, sweetie. We have to allow ourselves to shed the false narrative, both in our own self-identity and also in the way we live our lives and the way we connect with others. OK, and that's the scary thing. Everyone's scared of being isolated. Everyone's scared of being abandoned, rejected, betrayed. But when you're connected to source, that cannot possibly happen. So what we learn on this journey of self-mastery is all the ways that we still disconnect ourselves from source when we buy into the BS belief system or bullshit <laughs> up to you. OK, so um, <clears throat> Paradise Earth Codes. Christ-like miracle maker codes and the Atlantis master teacher codes are all powerfully coming to us presently <coughs> the paradise earth codes the christ-like miracle codes and the atlantis master teacher codes they're all the ones that the heavens have opened to gift to us now i've obviously said to you two ways one the retreat and two working with me through fearless loved up and limitless with, with my team this is the way that we access all of these phenomenal codes and embed them into our being so remember if you want to know more about these just to get in touch with me asap but let me now get into these key blocks so the the question to ask yourself that's going to help you get through these corridor this corridor is how can you see every limitation as a lesson and lesson and a blessing so now oh you know in the next 24 hours we're going to experience the the new moon the solar eclipse sorry in aries okay which is between a uh, I think they call it an annular and a solar eclipse. So it's a ring of fire one and also a total eclipse where I believe it is the, the moon passes between the sun and the earth. And as a result of that, um, we get this moment of blackout, which is like a reset. Now I'm having my wisdom tooth up tomorrow. It's really quite interesting, the timing, because this is the thing that has inflamed every 10 years or so, um, has brought me to my knees, <laughs> where I've used every tool I have to overcome the limitation that's brought to me. And I've still needed to seek assistance at times to support me like I did last time. But that seeking assistance allowed me to then drop a habit I had massively outgrown, but was still holding on to. So everything is playing its part when you look back on the story, right? So the other question I'd ask you, two questions that will see you through this period, yeah? How can you see every limitation as a lesson and a blessing? Everything that shows up that seems like it's thwarting you is actually a, a lesson to lead to a blessing, right? A gift. And 
the other question, anytime you find yourself feeling small, feeling limited, feeling helpless and hopeless, is do I need saving or do I save myself? Okay, right, that's all that. And, you know, for those of you, because I did do a little post on LinkedIn about this, for those of you who are the, what I call the soul CEOs and the heart-centered change makers, and you're here to affect change in the collective, you're changing structures, policies, um, business models, um, all sorts of amazing shifts that are necessary in the, the infrastructure, if you like, of our society. You're here to help make those changes. Please do not neglect yourself. Your inner journey is essential. If you keep looking outwards and you don't do the work I'm talking about, you're going to run yourself to the ground. And what's inevitable is getting sick or losing that relationship or not being able to have the baby that you want or, or, or because ultimately you're not allowing yourself to self-nurture enough in your gifts that you're giving to this world. It's not either or, it's and this and more. Okay, so let's look at typically what actually goes on and how we can overcome this. So that actually what you can do is when you do find yourself in a place where you're about to stretch beyond the threshold, which is the ring of fire, it's like this, do that. Ah, when we're giving birth, the baby's coming out of the, per the perineum. Ah, you feel that you feel a, a burning going on here okay and one of the key things that a midwife and a birth assistant uh, aims to do is to support the mother to take it easy at that time so she doesn't push hard and therefore create damage in her perineum so this is the same thing when you're going through a big change like that and it's really really intense and slow it down slow it down take as much pressure off as possible so that you don't just push through for the sake of it and damage yourself in the process okay often backing off a bit and then just allowing the natural process of your body to do its work is key so let's apply this also to what's going on so when you are about to cross the threshold when you decide you want something more in your life and actually the teacher the course the opportunity appears What's going to happen is all your mind blocks are going to come in the way. So if you want to fulfill your 5D destiny, you need a 4D bridge. The 4D bridge is the mind. It's how you work with your mind to turn problems into blessings, right? To turn problems as you perceive them into opportunities for growth. So in my own examples, I'm going to give you one. When my beautiful beloved and I got together, um, very quickly uh, after we got together well actually no first of all in order for us to get together I had to face the person that I thought I wanted to be with and draw a line and say hey dude I want this in my life now I had to own that I really wanted I was just turning 40 to be married I wanted to have the experience of having a husband having a man in my life who really had my back not someone that I had to compensate for not someone that I had to wait for not someone that I had to make excuses for not someone that I had to in some way be a bit better a bit less a bit whatever but someone that really had my back so there had been someone that had been in my life that I'd had a, a brief relationship with after a longer relationship with someone else that um, I thought was the one. And I spent 18 months after three months of being in a courtship and then a splitting up after a moment of me going, this isn't working for me. <laughs> it's never going to work for me. I was right. But I then doubted myself and went backwards. Notice whether this is true for you or not. And um, as a result of that, I spent 18 months trying to do a dance that would make me whoever I needed to be for that person to say yes. But there was a lot of push-pull going on. And it was a power struggle. And in the end, I had to call it and say, hey, this is what I want. If you can make me here, great. If you can't, can you please move to the left? And that person moved to the left. And I was devastated, absolutely devastated. My ego was on the floor. I'd been brave. I'd said what I wanted. I'd taken the risk of being abandoned, rejected, betrayed. And guess what? I was abandoned and I was rejected. I wasn't betrayed at that point, but hey. So a week later, literally swipe left, like the eclipse energy, off he goes, not going to be the match, but in lands my beautiful Ian. Bam. And at this point, I had a choice point. The choice point was, do I go back to that 10-year on-off, not quite what I wanted, but lovely guy relationship, or do I face what I really want, which is actually a risk? The risk is I don't know this guy. I haven't got a history with him. I fancy him. I long for him. But what if, what if, what if, what if, what if? Get where I'm going? But I knew when I was facing this situation, and someone else was interested in the one that I was interested in as well, by the way, 
um, I had to own that I knew where my energy was. I knew where I wanted to go, right? It was this person, not this person. <sighs> okay, so then what? That was the truth of it. So that meant lining up with it. That meant saying yes to it. That meant disappointing someone else. That meant possibly upsetting a friend of mine who also had designs on what I could see was for me, right? But I had to own, I had to be selfish. I had to say, this is the path that I want for myself. And in that choice, things happened super quickly. Timelines collapsed, boom, here we are. And here we are literally having the relationship I'd always longed for. This man that was there for me, that's literally saying to me, I don't want to be one of your boyfriends. I want to be your boyfriend. I'm serious about you. I'm like, ooh, coming on. What if he's a control freak? What if this, what if that? And it's like, no, he's serious. He wants it. Within a very short period of time, I've been invited to go to a paradise island to Grand Cayman. He was already on his way there. He was going to be spending three months there. Did I want to go? There was another risk. Another risk, my friends. Another birth canal. Another ring of fire to step through. Oh, but I can't. Oh, but who's going to look after the cat? Oh, how am I going to afford it? Oh, how is my business going to run? All the no's. You get where I'm going? I knew where I wanted to go. I wanted to go just like I knew I wanted this relationship. I wanted this guy. I wanted to go to this paradise island, right? But there were all the reasons why not to. And I was the one that had to jump through each of those ring of fires and find a way through. How can I rather than I can't? Who can come and stay in my house to look after my cat? Is my daughter going to be okay without me being here? Yes, she is. She's got a father. She's got a boyfriend. She doesn't really live with me anyway, uh, the way she used to. That's going to be okay. Will my business be able to run? Yes, I can run it remotely. Not a problem. Will it be a risk to go and spend a month with a guy that I, I only just getting together with? Yes, but you know what? If we're going to have a future together, why not do this? I took the risk. So here I am now. You know me, those of you who've been with me for a long time, you know I have a genuine, sacred union, divine counterpart relationship. This is a man that I'm super happy to be with. I have a house I live in that I don't have to pay a mortgage on. Did I, did I create the conditions? Did I stipulate it had to happen this way and I had to earn this much money and it had to come to be this? No, I just said what I wanted. This house came to me in a dream. I am taken care of. I am safe. I am secure. I am doing the work that I love. Did this just land on my lap? No, I worked freaking hard for it. And do you know what the hard bit was? Facing my fears. Every time I wanted something that seemed like it was out of my reach, I had to stretch myself. I had to borrow, right, from others. I'll never forget the time that I decided I wanted to up level as a coach. And I knew who I wanted to work with. I was clear about that. I loved her confidence, her energy. I knew I wanted it. She told me the price tag I was like, <gasps> okay, I'll do the, the cheaper option first, but I want to do that bigger option, but I can't even stretch myself there. And I didn't have the funds. So I was going to have to borrow. Guess what I did? I went to the one person that I knew had the money, but the, I least wanted to borrow money from because I was ready to bet on myself. I was ready to believe in myself. And I asked him, do you believe in me? Do you want me to succeed? Do you believe in my capacity to succeed? Yes, I do. Yes, I do want to support you. Right. Well, I would like a temporary loan. I want this much money. This is how I'm going to pay it back to you in the worst case scenario. And I'll pay it back to you sooner if I can, which I did. Right. That was what opened my doorway to understanding leveraging, understanding what I needed to do every time I was going to stretch myself beyond what I knew. It wasn't going to come at a price tag, whether that was the time investment, the money investment, the location investment that was comfortable for me. I was going to have to go beyond, right? And believe in me. Now that is the path of a co-creator. That is the path of a miracle maker. That is the path of a magician. You don't know how, you don't worry about the how, you just decide what you want and you believe in your ability, your innate intrinsic ability to co-create what it is you desire because you are co-creating with your divine self. If you listen to all the doubt. If you listen to all the fears, if you listen to all the reasons why you shouldn't, you are co-creating with your ego self, your lower self. Get it? Now, I am not saying to you to, you, to take meals from your children's ta table, right? I'm not saying to you, put yourself in a position where you're going to land on the street. You've got to be honest with where you are, where you want to go, and how many steps are going to be needed for you to get there. You don't go from here to here. Even if you take a quantum leap, right, there are still necessary steps along the way. So working with people you trust is essential. But what I am saying, and I hope this is clear to everybody now, is that it's not just going to come to you and land in your lap. It will make itself available. The door will open and you're going to need to step forward, my friend. 
and the opportunity will do its best to meet you. It will have boundaries, it will have parameters, but the more you let yourself stretch into what it is you know you want, you just don't know how you're going to do it. You know you want it, you just don't know the how. And you let yourself open to the mystery of being led by your higher self, the you that already has what you want. Oh my, that's the beauty of it. That's the magic, okay? You have to get this thing and the mind to work for your heart, heart on behalf of your heart. It is a, I don't even like the word servant, but it is uh, employed by your soul self through your heart, right? And when you let things go in this way, when you let things operate in this way, then that's when the wonderful, wonderful opportunities can really land in your lap. So here are the things that I've learned. Many of us, especially when we're on a manifesting path, love everything to flow easily. We're like, well, the signs are all saying I should do it. Great, so I'll do it. I'll go that way. It's flowing nice and easy, so it means it's meant to be. And on some of the lower levels of your manifesting game, if you like, on some of the lower rungs of the ladder, that's true. But as you get closer and closer to embodying your divine self, more and more deep resistance is going to come up. It's another thing I say to my clients is just remember this, that your conditioned self, your programmed self will get more and more um, creative in its intentions to try and keep you following the path that you inherited, not the path that you are consciously choosing. So catching yourself is essential. It's one of the things we teach a lot when we're in the fearless program. But essentially, one of the absolute key essentials, 3D beliefs to actually watch out for is that if it doesn't flow, it's not meant to be. Because as you get closer to your mastery teachings, you will put a lot of blocks in your way. You will do it to yourself because you've got to show you're absolutely determined and committed. If you really want this, if you don't want it, you, make, you can make excuses, it's fine. But if you really want something, if you have a deep longing for it, then there may well be a lot of different obstacles. And, you know, just a little reminder here that for me and my beloved to come together, we had to wait four years. We met well before, but he was betrothed to someone else. He was married to someone else. I didn't want to be the bit on the side. I didn't want to be the other woman. I didn't want to be the rebound. So I waited. I put conditions on me being willing to enter into this sacred union. Those conditions were for the highest good of all and the win, win, win. They weren't me cutting my nose off to spite my face. They were me honoring myself, being worthy of what I desire. So if it doesn't flow easily, it's not meant to be. Mm, yes and no. As I said, when you're evolving into your highest lessons, you're going to challenge yourself. You're going to need to really ask for that divine guidance. If this is for my highest good, please make that very clear to me and help me to remove the obstacles that are in the way. That's a prayer that's going to allow you to open doors, right? Help me remember that faith, faith makes things possible, not necessarily easy. So that's the first thing is to watch out for that. If it's meant to be, it will be. Nah, mate, you're going to have to put some sweat into this if you are changing a big, deep pattern, okay? That's where you do work hard for something. That's where you do push through. That's where you do fight, if you like. You fight the old self. And when I say fight, you stand up to. That's the way I would put it, because I, I just still cannot find how fighting essentially can really help us move beyond duality. I'm open to it. <laughs> Anyone who's got ideas, let me know. Um, please do comment as you're hearing these things, okay? Anything that is affecting you in a way that you're like, yeah, baby. All right, so the next thing, when we look at making decisions about moving forward or not based on what they cost. So whenever I hear it's too expensive, I go, wow, you've got some lack programming you need to work through. So what, you're not worth it? Is that what you're saying? It's too expensive for you? Why? Why? Because you're going to actually need to shift your paradigm of what you're worth what you're deserving of you're gonna have to stop thinking small and start thinking big you'll need to challenge those limiting beliefs that you have that tell you that up to this is okay but beyond that is not okay is it that you know how can you possibly spend on yourself when there are so many starving people in the world people who have nothing well how are you going to help them if you don't have much what i wrote here is when we equate the cost of something to the length of time that we're actually engaged with it rather than the experience being offered remember that this is the old mindset affecting you again so i'll give you retreat as an example you know spending a week with me on this retreat is akin to probably spend more or less spending six months in the fearless program 
right? <laughs> if someone is used to thinking, well, this amount of time it's worth it, this amount of time it's not. What we have forgotten here is the impact of the time, the impact of doing something that's condensed, that's fast, that's deep, that's rooted versus something that needs longer time to embed. And, you know, when something does need longer, typically, again, look at the difference between in-person, physical, quick results, quick move-throughs, quick, quick busting, being in my energy is intense, right, versus being online. Right. So six month journey, six day journey, more or less comparable pricing we're talking about here. It's interesting, isn't it? Because our brains will do these like, well, what's it an hour? What's it a day? What's it a this? What, what am I worth? And it's like, no, you actually really want to look at this differently. And what would you spend that money on? A handbag, a family holiday, a car. OK, so then you look at cost benefit. What is this time that I'm going to engage in this activity going to allow me to have access to that I otherwise would not be able to access that I otherwise would not be able to open to. And this is the biggest difference, if you like, between being in lack and being beyond lack is when you make a decision based on the experience and whether you want to have that experience versus making the decision on what it costs. Now, obviously, you need to be able to access the funds. So, as I said, the quantum leap in our own consciousness you know, back in the day when two grand seemed like 20 grand to me, right? I had to do the two grand leap first before I could do the 20 grand leap, right? But once I'd done the two grand leap, once I'd done the six grand leap, the 10 grand leap, I could imagine the 20 grand leap. I understood. But I still, just because it has a higher price tag doesn't mean it's worth it. I have to be discerning and go, is this really what I need? Is this really what I want? Just because it's more expensive, it doesn't mean it's worth more. And I had to get burnt to learn that as well, right? So discernment is key in everything that you actually do. So one statement to be wary of, because this is a 3D keep you in lack mindset, is when you make decisions based on something being too expensive. The other is when you decide you don't have the money for something. Now, you genuinely might not, depending on where you are on your journey, you genuinely might not right now. You might not be able to access it. Really, truly, you might not be able to. But for the majority, when something comes their way and they are buzzing for it and they know they want it, they also know that they can access the funds, but it's going to be uncomfortable for them. Maybe they've got to move some stuff around. Maybe they've got an asset they need to sell. Maybe they're going to need to convert crypto to cash. Maybe they're going to need to take a loan. Maybe they are going to need to borrow off someone who has got the money and isn't going to be doing without and end up with an interest-free loan. Maybe they're going to get a, a, a zero interest credit card. What is the way they're going to do it? Maybe they're just going to decide to spend some of their rainy day money, right? Because again, what I've had to learn to do is to recognize that the more empowered I am to co-create my reality, to do whatever it takes, right, to allow myself to know that whatever life throws at me, I'm going to be able to come out and I'm going to be able to thrive. I'm going to be able to support others through the experiences I go through. Stop being attached to money, how much I have and how much I'm going to get. What I've opened myself up to is that there is a flow moving through me and anything I ever need to access the next level of my evolution, I can access. So having money on a credit card or having a loan doesn't make me a bad person. It's the conditioning that says, oh, you've got debt, you're bad. You're a drain on the system. Well, that, that very system that puts us in this position, where is this money going to go? Is there a finance support so, uh, amount or is it infinite? Well, again, we're moving paradigms in how we understand resource, and that's beyond this activation today. But what I wanted to say to you is just to remember that when you're making decisions on limiters, challenge those decisions. So what I put here is I don't have the money, and you do actually have it or have ways to access it, and you just need to be creative and remember you are worth it. Everyone I know who comes through and decides to challenge their old conditioning around lack, around their self-worth, around their dreams, around what they long for, what they want, and to reprogram themselves so they can start to have it, has the foundations to prosper, to thrive in every area of their life. What is that worth to you? Once you've changed that foundation, so anything else you do, you can succeed at, what's that worth to you? It's worth thinking about that way. And it's all about reframing. Here's the next big one. I don't have the time. 
Okay, now this is a woman who's perpetually never on time, finishes later than she expects to, starts later invariably. It's part of my, I channel something, I'm like, right, it's going to be 20 minutes, it's 40. I'm like, hey, guides, <laughs> humans like things to finish on time and to start on time. Yes, but we're non-human and we're trying to do our best, bear with us. Okay, fine. All right, those who want to will stay, those who can't or don't want to will go. That's fine. I'm not attached, doesn't make me a good person or a bad person. I'm not intending to steal from others in terms of energy and time, but I do give generously, give very generously from my overflowing cup. So if those want to receive it, they do. And if they don't, they don't. It's up to them. Okay. So what we have here is time is an illusion and it is yours to master. Creating time means making the effort to change current habits and align with the version of you who is a match for what you are longing for. So if you know you've signed up to something that you do need to be on time for, and you know every week you're a little bit late, but you find yourself going from 10 minutes to eight minutes to seven to six to five to four to three to one, well done, you're doing it. It doesn't happen overnight, but you keep congratulating yourself for the changes you are making. And you allow yourself to um, keep developing, if you like, the, the muscles necessary for you to be able to hold the new frequency of aligning with divine timing. That's my gift to you. So not having the time is actually something that just requires us to re-examine our relationship to time and what we do fill our time with. What do we spend our time on? And what would happen if we actually stopped spending our time on that and we spent our time on something else? Next one, do or do not, there is no try. So letting go of trying, fighting, struggling. When you make a decision to stop using those words, magic happens, okay? So these are the 3D constructs. These are the elements that keep us stuck in an old paradigm of lack and limitation. Trying, trying for a baby, trying to change a habit, trying to be more whatever. F off the trying, F off the um, struggling, F off the uh, fighting. Fighting for what? Stand up to, bring light to, a command, commit to, keep giving a go at. I'm committed to this change. I'm showing up every time. I'm doing my very best. Okay, no trying. Okay, I'll try to make it. Not interested. Are you or are you not? I'll look at why I'm resisting this and I'll come back to you. Here's my heartfelt yes, here's my heartfelt no. Respect to you for that. No excuses, no sugarcoat. Most of us are actually really scared of the changes we say we want. And so we make excuses on the surface and we don't own what we're scared of. If you don't meet yourself in what you're scared of, if you don't voice it, nothing can really change. Right, then I get to a particular saying I love, there is no need to push the river, it flows on its own. So whereas I've said on the one hand to be careful about if it's not flowing, then it's not uh, worth your time, you're not meant to do it. The other side of this is when you're pushing, pushing, pushing for something and actually you just need to surrender and let go and say, all right, I've done everything I can to make this possible. Everything that's in my, um, my human control, everything that I know is a tool that I can use, everything I could do to support something to happen, I have done. But now I just have to let go. And if it's meant to be, it is meant to be. And if it isn't, it isn't. There's a big difference there between actually having done everything we can, which is God grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, the courage to change the things I can and the wisdom to know the difference versus the, oh, I made a little effort, but oh, it was too hard. So I'm just going to back off. Oh, it's going to make me uncomfortable for a little bit, but it's worth it. I'll never forget when I traveled. I decided to go and meet my teacher, Susanna Kennedy, uh, on the island of Kauai. And this was, again, when I started the path of miracles and magic. I didn't have the money. I had to put it on a credit card, just like I didn't have the money to work with her. But I knew I wanted to. So I put that on a credit card. I managed to make that money back. I changed my life from a yoga teacher to a coach. Like, <laughs> amazing stuff, right? But going to Kauai, that was like two days travel, right? Two days travel for a five-day retreat and then two more days travel back. When I say travel, I mean 36 hours, 48 hours by the time I got home. So 48 hours traveling, different airports, and then, and then cars, etc. For five days there, different time zone, completely 10 hour difference, and then two more days to get back. Did I do it? Oh, yes, I did. Heaven, yes, I did, because it was worth it. It totally changed my life. I wanted the experience. That's what I mean. 
the difference between it's not flowing so I won't do it and pushing the river I didn't have to push it I found a way and the day the the, the way open for me because I, it was aligned for me to do this if you keep hitting obstacles and you keep asking for divine guidance and you keep getting more obstacles right and actually it's like no you're really not meant to go you're really not meant to do this trust 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 there's a surrender there and and that's different but you do everything you can to align with opening the doors and meeting your resistance first. That's really important. Okay, whether this is a personal situation in your life, whether this is a business situation, whether it's a new policy, whatever it is you're seeking to do, when you call in a miracle, you call in a shift in perspective that allows the impossible to become possible. When you decide to call in magic, you're basically calling in self-belief. I believe in me and my ability to overcome whatever obstacles in my way. Yeah, I'm going to take a risk. Finally, I can't get the time off or the childcare. Actually, it doesn't find me. There's two more. I can't get time off or the childcare. So this is where you ask for what you want. You request help. You call in favours and adjust your schedule. Actually, you might need to ask a few people who will say no. It's not right for them, but the right person will say yes. And this isn't about, please help me. I need you to please, please, please putting guilt on others. It's stating what you want, what you need, how long you're going to be that you want someone loving to look after your children, they're going to feel safe and secure with, that you know that you will benefit and they will benefit as a result of doing this. And that also, you know, it's okay to ask for help and it's okay for people to say no. And it's okay to, you know, feel like you're inconveniencing people and at the same time, give them the opportunity to say yes or no according to what is right for them, right? You're not manipulating, you're not controlling, just being clear about your intention. Next one, I can't leave or disrupt the routines with my kid, kids or my partner. Basically, I don't like it when they make me feel good. Mommy, I'm going to miss you. Yes, you will miss me, but I'm going to come back and I'm going to have loads of cuddles for you. You can't leave me. I don't know how to look after the kids. Or I'm going to have to cook every night. Or I'm going to have to miss football. And how many things do I miss? Right? I'm a committed mother, partner, whatever your truth is. I need you to step up this week, this month, this year for me to do this. Can you do that? Right, children, we're going to change our routine a little bit because mummy needs this. Mummy is worth it and deserving of it. And mummy's going to be much happier as a result. Or daddy, by the way. Right. And so this is what we're going to do. And no, I'm not going to buy into your emotional ways of manipulation. Yes, I love you. I'll be with you energetically. I'll call you every day. I'll send you energy. All right. That temporary discomfort is essential for your long term gain. And all of us are actually switching what I would call, um, what's it called now? Totally left my head. Instant gratification for long-term rewards. Okay, all of us are on that path. That is the ascended master path, right? Where the, the sort of instant gratification is your kids, you know, don't have to really change anything. They don't get uncomfortable. They don't kick off. Neither does your husband or your partner or your wife or whatever. But you don't get to do that thing that you, you know you really need to do. You know it's important for your growth and your soul growth. Whereas the long-term gain for the short-term discomfort is they're going to kick off a bit. There's going to be some boundaries that get pushed. You're going to have to roar a little bit, be discerning, be consistent and say, this is what's happening. We're going to do this. Yes, I'm going to miss you for a few days, but I'll be back. I'll deal with it. I can deal with it. And so can you. We'll, make, we'll, we'll put the contingencies in place that we need to. And then you get what you really needed from the experience you come back enriched. It's worth it done it many times myself last one i can't I, I can do this on my own if i just go back over the course content watch these videos read that book be more committed be more consistent sweetheart dear beloved soul when you are going through an up level you can't do it on your own you have to plug in to those who are ahead of you who've already integrated what you are about to integrate it doesn't come from you doing it on your own because you can't actually see your own blind spots all right. None of us can. This was the biggest shift in me was going to those that had what I wanted and lining up with them versus trying to do everything myself because I was scared of taking a risk, trying to scared of getting it wrong. Yes. Did I make some investments in people that actually weren't right for me? Yes, I did, because I bought a surface result versus a deep, deeply ingrained truth. I've learned now that, you know, there are people who will be very, very confident, come to me feeling really assured that they could get something for me. But if I'm not sure. I own that I'm not sure. And I go, I love what you're saying, but I'm not sure that's going to work for me. I'm not sure that's going to be right for me. I'm not sure that the experience and the success that you have currently in this area can translate here. 
and you deal with the tennis match that will either mean you're right or you're prepared to take that risk and give it a go. And then you get discerning as to how long you'll give it a go for. I had a 30,000 pound lesson in that where I actually had to in the end go, you know what, this is really not working for me and I'm not enjoying it either. I don't want to do this anymore. And I am listening to what you're saying and I am doing what you're telling me to, but it's not actually right for me. So I'll step back now. It took me six months, but it's okay. I won't do it again, All right? So there are those who have tremendous confidence in themselves because they haven't yet been through the trials and tribulations you have. If you're a bit longer in the tooth like I am, remember the discernment is there to support you. But speak your, speak your concerns, speak your doubt to the person that you are you know, looking at engaging with. Let them respond to you and then notice how you feel in response to that. Are you reassured or do you feel that your doubt is validated? Yeah, that your fear is, um, I say justified, that, that this is your own higher self actually protecting you and guiding you, right? You don't sweep stuff under the carpet that's uncomfortable. Bring it to light and what is right for you will reveal itself. So go back. uh, Yeah, I've just said this. Um, The control freak element of us that wants to keep things as they are will always, yeah, look to try and do it all on its own. Well, if I if I do this, if I do that, well, they're giving me a rough idea. I could probably work this out. All right, go ahead, try it. But you know, I say this a lot in my coaching programs. One of the elements of self mastery is actually about knowing when you feel really disconnected, that you kind of like, where am I at? this is weird place. I don't feel like I've got my star families communicating. I feel disconnected from my guides. I always say they're up leveling right now. They've had to disconnect from you to up level. And then they'll send the guy ropes down. They'll send the lift down to get you back up. Trust, call out for that support, reach out. It's coming. They have to go through their upgrades. They go through their maintenance to upgrade. And then we do the same. So when I unplug from all of my clients, there's moments where I'm like, shut down, everything's off, not responding. But that's so I can come back fully charged, right? So all of this is for you to be able to, to basically navigate this journey now from this eclipse that's coming now through to the eclipse in two weeks' time, which is going to be in Scorpio, full moon in Scorpio. Woo, woo, woo. And then this corridor is, again, probably about 18 months. I'm not sure when the other end of it is, but I know that the last time we had this particular influence was from October, 2013 through to September, 2015. So it's 23 months. So this could be another long one. And the lessons that you're learning are to move beyond yo-yoing from good thing to bad thing, from everything's going great to everything's terrible, to actually find your midline and go, whatever happens, I can surf this edge. If I come off my surfboard, I can get back on. I know how to self-regulate and I know when I need to grow and I know when I need to root down. And so long as you take those lessons, my dears, all of the frequencies that are available now will start to be able to move through you. You'll be receptive to them rather than blocked to them because you don't know what to do with this higher frequency energy. When I keep seeing people activating, taking next level trainings and they're not then putting them into practice, that always concerns me. You need a maintenance program. Because all you're doing is bringing more and more light into your being without grounding it and earthing it. It sends you cuckoo. It sends you loopy. You get more reactive. Yeah. You get more sensitive, not in a good way. And often this is why those of us who are spiritually awakening get a bit of a kind of the the raised eyebrow look. Because we need to learn to walk our talk. I say that in the nicest possible way. So if you want to know more about Santorini, get in touch ASAP. Uh, We're going to have our intro call this Sunday. So uh, this is the time now to speak up. And if you would like to discuss a payment plan, I'm happy to do that. I want to make it possible for you. You're going to need to step forward. Okay, it's going to be epic, epic with a capital E-P-I-C. And it is about us reclaiming our Atlantean master teacher codes, the Paradise Earth codes, the Christ Light codes, and being able to resolve our inner masculine and feminine, all the places we self-sabotage, actually taking the time and the space to receive the guidance from our soul self, right? And to really get clear on the most joyful, graceful, and easy way we can share our gifts with this world. That's that invitation. And if you would like to join me for Fearless, Loved Up and Limitless, two of the bonuses, one of them is the Rainbow Flame activations, which uh, are initiations, activations, energy field detoxes and integration meditations. And these just on their own are worth, you know, one, 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 one. So, you know, it's probably about $1,500 or just a little less than that. And 
you know, giving a number is just for people's rational brains to understand, but this is your 12 strand DNA reactivation. This is when you access the crystalline code. So you can truly not only activate your light body, but integrate from uh, star to diamond. So integrate into your resolved divine human self. Um, I think it's very, very important to state that. And then also all of the master teachings around money making magic, around love magnet, uh, around uh, recession proofing your energy all of this kind of work is all in the bonus content too because this is part of self-mastery this is about you learning to put yourself first to have what you want not just to be out there trying to do things for the world saving the world is a bit of a fallacy the key is for us to save ourselves and then everything around us actually changes. There's also a fast action, fearless apprenticeship or what I should call um, a scholarship, sorry, not an apprenticeship for those of you who are like, damn, yes, I'm doing it. And that's two grand off. It's pretty powerful, right? So if you want to join us whilst I am still the main coach, because presently I've just completed the recording. Today is the last um, presentation that we're putting together for the main bulk of the course content, and then we'll be refining. So um, I have a wonderful team that support me in the delivery of this wonderful work. If you'd like me to be involved in your journey in this deep, deep and impactful way, then it's time to step forward and book a design mapping call and we'll take it from there. I love you all very much. You are amazing. Please do um, keep your diary free on Friday the 5th. I believe it'll be around lunchtime. I'm going to be in Greece in Santorini. So I'll be hosting the full moon light language transmission world service and um, personal healing from Santorini with all the energies that we're going to be working through there. So very excited to share that with you. And yeah, in the meantime, enjoy the activations. Keep an eye on the YouTube channel because I've got some great interviews that I'll be publishing soon. Uh, the next one is with Megan Young, which is all about the structures of the new earth paradigm, uh, new structures that allow everybody to succeed in business and personal life, and in particular, working with the neurodivergent female brain. And so many of us are undiagnosed spectrum, myself included, and we're constantly walking around feeling like there's something wrong with us. And actually, there's nothing wrong with us. We're just wired differently. We're wired for the lateral perspective because we're amazing at being able to see how everything's connected rather than that forward drive and that's the beauty of how we're moving into the future we're celebrating our diversity and working to everyone's strengths so keep an eye on that but for now i wish you a wonderful afternoon i look forward to your comments i look forward to how you use everything i've shared with you today to have a positive impact on your life and actually to make the decision to say yes and to seek the way through OK, that is the 4D bridge that allows you to access your 5D destiny. All right. 3D reality, old school, old hat. We've done it. Let's take that quantum leap forward. I love you. You're amazing. Take care for now.